you doing, Mark? We finished our ride. You can come out of that position now. Why would I? I'm so comfortable. <laughs> Are you crazy? My goodness, I cannot wait to get off the bars. There's just nothing comfortable about that. Uh, you really need to be. I mean, yeah, you'll learn. Jokes aside, getting your upper body as close to horizontal while still being able to pedal efficiently does test the body and is a bit of a continual compromise between aerodynamics and comfort, but they can work together. Obviously today though, we are focusing on comfort. And once you have really dialed that in, you can then make tweaks to your aerodynamics once you're used to riding in that TT position. Let's start with position. Now, you're probably thinking I've gone mad. Surely it's all about position. Well, I guess everything we're going to cover is connected to position, but there's a bit more to it than that. And we're going to start by looking specifically at your saddle and its height. If you're starting from scratch, then for a really rough idea, you can start by just standing next to your bike and your saddle, and the saddle should be roughly just below the top of your hip. And then the best thing is to get on. And if you can support yourself next to something stable and then clip in and have your legs straight, so your bottom leg straight and your foot should be parallel to the ground when your knee is pretty much straight but just not locked out. But it's far more accurate to actually get on your bike and ride. And the clue is in your hips. You want your hips to be remaining pretty still when you're on the bike. If they're excessively moving side to side, that's usually a sign that your saddle is too high. Or if your knees are coming up into your chest, that's a sign your saddle's too low. When riding a TT bike, your contact points on your saddle are gonna be very different to a typical road bike position. Essentially, your whole pelvis is rotated forwards and therefore there's more pressure on the sensitive areas as opposed to on your seat bones. So the first thing you want to address is your saddle itself. Now, TT bikes often come in a split nose design, like the Sala Italia Watt saddle I'm riding, and that just relieves some of that pressure. You'll also notice quite a few TT bikes will have some slightly more adhesive parts on the saddle, which will just help you maintain the right position, especially if you're riding in a wet tri suit. And then you might have noticed some people will ever so slightly tilt the nose of their saddle down. Well, this can sometimes help with comfort of the saddle, but be aware because it will naturally put more pressure through your arms and your hands. The final area to address when it comes to your saddle is its position in relation to the bottom bracket. Now, you've probably noticed when you're riding a TT bike that just you feel like you're further forwards compared to your road bike. Well, that is the most significant difference in geometry between this type of bike and a road bike. And the idea is it's positioned like that to help you keep your hips more open and engage your glutes. But it will take a little bit of getting used to and just be aware that you can move your saddle forwards and backwards and play around with this. I think we've exhausted the bottom. It's time to move forward. So the cockpit and in particular the TT bars positioning needs to work in relation to your saddle position. Finding that right reach is vital for comfort, but also finding a position that you can maintain for this length of time. If you're too stretched out, then yeah, you might look really aero, but you're gonna struggle because your core and your back is gonna be working really hard. And you'll probably find that you're holding really tight with your hands as well to maintain that position. So start by making sure you're totally happy with the position of your saddle, and then you can adjust the front end. Most TT bikes have plenty of options for alterations. How low you have your front end will depend on your flexibility and strength. Remember, you'll need to be holding this position for long periods at a time. And once you've decided on the height of your bars, you'll then need to experiment with the angle of the bars and the distance from the tips of them away from the nose of your saddle as one affects the other. Traditionally, it's thought that a more raised angle will be more comfortable, but this isn't so for everyone. Many TT bars will also give the option of changing their width apart. But remember, if you're using a water bottle or a bike computer in between, to leave enough space for that narrower isn't always better. It's that balance between being practical, comfortable and aero. Then you've obviously got the main point of contact itself, where you're going to be resting your arms on the aero pads. And you'll see a lot of bikes now, especially the pros, 
will have those custom made cups that support a huge amount of the forearm which allows for that pressure to be dissipated and really for them to get comfortable and secure in that position but even if you've got traditional cups like these remember you can actually move them so if you peel off the pad you'll see underneath that you can move them forwards and backwards and quite often in and out and then the pads themselves if they're not comfy well look to replace them or add some extra padding onto them and now i know hopefully you'll be spending the majority of time on your aero bars but you do still sometimes need to ride on your base bars and they are not designed for comfort so you might want to look at replacing the tape and making it a little bit more comfy there or even adding on something that's a little bit more grippy when you've got those steep descents and maybe you're a little bit wet and sweaty and just give you a bit more security. And then we've got the third and final contact point, your feet. Now this is obviously in relation to your saddle height again. So if for example, you want to play around with having a different crank length, you'll probably find you need to adjust your saddle height accordingly. And you can also play around with the position of your cleats but I would suggest dialing in all of the other main points we've talked about first and then making any tweaks there afterwards. Now, throughout this video, we've really talked about the things you can adjust on your bike, but it's not just about the bike. You, yes, you and your body will play a big part too. And we've mentioned strength and flexibility throughout this because they do play a vital part in getting comfortable and maintaining that position. For example, if you've got nice flexible hips and shoulders, you'll be able to get into a more aero position that you desire. And having the strength in your core and your back will allow you to maintain that position once you're there. If you do have any niggles or tweaks before you get on the bike, spend two hours in the TT position and they'll most certainly be exacerbated. So just recommend keeping on top of all that mobility work. It's quite a lot to think about, I know, but you'll find making one adjustment at one end will quite often make you feel more comfortable throughout. So go away and play with those parts and let me know how you get on. And hopefully you can get nice and comfortable riding in this position all day long. Give us a like if you've enjoyed the video and remember you can subscribe if you've not yet done so.